Hello everyone, my name is Gabby, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review, this time reviewing episode 96. Through all the mishaps and tribulations, all ten members are finally gathered in time, and sent by the Grand Priest to the Tournament of Power Arena. Gohan reiterates the importance of teamwork, although Vegeta and Frieza seem less than willing to cooperate. Each universe arrives, and the tournament is about to start. So, what did I like about this episode? Well, first of all, some of the sort of character interactions that they put in. I mean, the fact is, a lot of these characters and a lot of these teams are kind of sort of meeting up for the first time, and this is their first sort of formal introduction to each other before they basically introduce each other by punching each other really hard and that's how we find out who all these characters are. But the fact is, yes, some of these characters actually do know each other or it would actually make sense for them to know each other or them to find out more about each other before the tournament actually starts. So we got a lot of interaction between Universe 7 and Universe 6 and also some interaction with Universe 11 as well. It's fun to see the series kind of acknowledging the relationships that some of these characters have towards each other. You know, it's like things between like Kappa and Vegeta but between like Goku and Toppo, and with like Cauliflower and Kale as well meeting the Universe 7 Saiyans for the first time. I did like that they did kind of actually acknowledge this, acknowledge that these relationships are interesting and they're kind of worth showing us before we actually get to the fight. That's kind of fun. It makes it feel like these characters, you know, do know each other and the universes are kind of interconnected in a way. Also, this episode we actually got to see all eight teams in the Tournament of Power, practically almost every single member of the team, practically every single member in this battle royale in the first place, and I've got to say I'm actually reasonably impressed. I mean, first of all, because they basically did exactly what they promised. They said this was going to be a battle royale with 80 different characters, and obviously everyone was kind of surprised and to see, you know, were they actually going to pull it off, have all of these members basically design all of these new characters, because that's a lot of characters to design, and they actually did it. All teams have 10 members, and they're all unique, and none of them really feel like lazy sort of copy-paste designs. I could just imagine the amount of effort that would have had to go to for making all of those characters, even if it was kind of a collaborative effort between a lot of different parties, and so I gotta say, I do appreciate they did that. They didn't take the lazy route and like maybe have a lot of these characters eliminated before we even got to see what they looked like so that way they didn't have to draw designs. No, they did draw designs. They did as many designs as they could and that's I do appreciate that. And second of all, I kind of like the sort of diversity here. I mean, I'll be honest, when I saw that sort of anthology episode, I think it was 91, that episode where we kind of went to different universes and saw different participants, I thought, I was actually kind of assuming that every universe kind of had their really big sort of gimmick and the entire teams were kind of going to be themed after that gimmick, but that's kind of, well, some of them are sort of true, but that's also not completely the case. A lot of these universes have like all of their 10 members look very distinctly different and don't have a very sort of big kind of underlying big sort of gimmicky theme. And well to be fair that could be a good and a bad thing. Like it could be bad because if the teams don't have a gimmick it means it's a lot harder to sort of distinguish them from each other but it's good because I feel like it, it makes it a lot more diverse, a lot more kind of variety. It feels like it feels like they're kind of caring more about these characters and they feel more like kind of real competitors as opposed to the idea that you have to kind of have this suspension of disbelief that it's like yeah no the 10 strongest members of each universe are all like themed in the exact same way and that just happens for every universe and it just happens to be like that. But no, they're like, no, you know, they could be completely different. You know, there could be guys, there could be girls, there could be weird alien monsters, there could be monsters, there could be parrots, there can be anything. And I like it, it's fun. As for what I didn't like about this episode, well first of all, apparently Vegeta has decided that teamwork is for weaklings and for sissies and he doesn't really want to do it. Or at the very least, if he's going to do it, it's going to have to be very, very hesitantly and only if there's like basically no other choice. And to that all I have to say is like, wait, really? I mean, if this was like Cell Arc Vegeta or Boo Arc Vegeta, I would kind of understand that he'd be very, very hesitant to want to just team up with anyone under any circumstance. But I'm kind of surprised that Dragon Ball Super Vegeta is acting like that. Because one thing that's been pretty consistent about Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super is that, well, yes, he is prideful, but he's also willing to sort of sacrifice his pride if the people that he cares about are in danger. That's kind of what happened in the Bingo Dance and Takayaki and Vegito Blue and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, sometimes I feel like Vegeta having that personality has made him feel a little bit boring in Dragon Ball Super, but kind of ignoring that and almost seeming like you're kind of regressing his character is not the way to fix that. I mean, yes, sure, Vegeta didn't want to team up with Goku in Resurrection F, 
but he was also completely willing to team up with Goku and Future Trunks against Zamasu. And in this tournament, the stakes are both higher and much more personal to him. So why is he feeling so hesitant about this? He's generally been the kind of guy in this series who knows the situation and knows what he needs to do and isn't going to get his pride making things really, really difficult for everyone else. So that was very odd for me. Also, Jiren was introduced in this episode. And while I think it was a pretty good introduction, it did make me realize that having Jiren and hit in the same room is also kind of making me concerned and showing me the same sort of issue that having Freezer and Frost in the same room shows me. You know, lazy character design. And that is that while I feel like Jiren's introduction and the way they've been hyping up Jiren has been handled competently and adequately to the point I do think that Jiren is kind of cool and I do want to see him fight, the kind of thing I'm kind of worried about is that at this point, it feels like Jiren feels a little bit too much like Hit 2.0 at this point. Like he's just this mysterious guy who Goku suddenly sees and sees how strong he is and is like really, really excited to fight him. And I feel like at this point, they haven't really done enough with Jiren to make him kind of stand up beyond that, to make it sort of feel like they're not just repeating what they did in the universe. Verse 6 tournament, having a mysterious guy the go who wants to beat and he's the big, big antagonist. Treating Jiren only like that, first of all, kind of makes Jiren feel a little less unique, and second of all, also makes Hit feel a bit kind of pointless. Like, it feels like he doesn't really need to be in this tournament unless he needs to, like, job to someone to show how much stronger that guy is. And that's kind of disappointing because, I mean, Hit is a cool character and I'm sure that Jiren could be a cool character. I, I kind of wish they felt a little bit more unique. I mean, maybe the tournament will do more with them. I don't know. But at this point, it's not the best first impression. So as for next episode, well, the tournament is actually, actually starting. That battle royale is actually going to start next episode everyone, all 80 people are going to be fighting and it actually looks kind of incredibly chaotic. I am very curious to see so like, you know, how quickly some of these people are going to be eliminated because, I mean, it's pretty obvious that having to do a fight between 80 people would be very, very crazy and very chaotic and very hard to do. So one thing I am curious about is to see how quickly they're going to kind of eliminate a lot of these guys so this tournament becomes a lot easier to handle and a lot easier to sort of follow. But, you know, that might not even happen for a while. I don't know. Things are very interesting. And after like 20 episodes, the tournament is actually starting. We have seen footage from the actual legitimate tournament of power. That is cool. I am very interested to see how they're going to do it. So that was Dragon Ball Super episode 96. I mean, honestly, it was pretty pained by the numbers, but it still honestly did leave me pretty hyped. I mean, this episode was pretty much just, you know, final preparations and also final sort of like, final sort of saying hello to everyone before the tournament of power actually starts. But, you know, it did do the things I feel like it set out to do. It did show us all the universes. I think it did actually do a good job of kind of like showing us out of all the universes, which ones are kind of more important to the characters and which ones might be a bit more relevant when the actual fight fighting starts, and they didn't take any shortcuts, really. I mean, we saw all of the contestants. We got, like, full cast shots, basically, for everyone. And heck, we even got to see the Gods of Destruction, and they even put a fight scene in this episode, which they did not need to do at all, because that's pretty animation-intensive, and they didn't need to do that. So, you know, I gotta say, I am actually impressed just by how straight Toei is playing a lot of this and how little they are using a lot of shortcuts which I thought that they were going to do a lot of the time. It honestly does give me faith that they will actually play the tournament of power pretty straight and we are going to see the big thing that everyone's hyped up for and seeing all these people fight. It's gonna be cool and I am actually really looking forward to it next week. So this is Gabby signing out and I'll see you all next week. Bye guys!